the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the giants and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, in this unique dispensation of the church age, being an administrator or pastor teacher, or at the same time a dispensationalist, it is much more evident for us to consider the parable of Luke chapter 16, verses 11, for a greater extension. The only reality what we find in Luke 16, 11, is that if then, that is the condition, in the unjust mammon, that is what they are going through, believing you are not, you became, that is what you couldn't prove yourself that you are faithful, then how or anyone who will give to you the true things so that you should be believing or you should be and trusting. It will be a great lesson for us to learn from the simple principle of this verse. When we are not faithful among this unrighteous mammon, how can we be faithful to the righteous things of true doctrine? Therefore, first we need to prove ourselves, are we really accountable to the call wherewith Lord has called us, not only to the spiritual realm, even into the physical realm. Therefore, the great example of King Alfred, who really bestowed his life to tell to the people, first make them to be graduates in Bible doctrine, so that they could be in return faithful towards this world where they are serving along. The great King Alfred mandate has been really taken out today. Today they have been replaced with the things of the past teachers, who themselves they are not faithful in this unrighteous mammon. They think they can be entrusted with this mystery doctrine of the church age in rightly dividing the word of the Lord, which is no way possible. Therefore, dear brethren, what great lesson we learn. We learn from the unjust word, the great lesson that we need to be faithful first towards Bible doctrine. And after as we graduate in Bible doctrine, we need to be faithful enough towards the things pertaining to this world so that we can leave behind a great legendary impact in this angelic conflict so that even in this world we were faithful in doing the work which has been submitted into our hands. If you have been given for a tent making, Apostle Paul proved it. If it was the work of translation for William Carey, he proved it. Like that there are very many great men who have been faithful because for them after believing in Christ, it was no longer them, but it was Christ who lives in them. And if our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was living in them, the hands that worked there was the best hands that that company can ever recognize. The same principle should be applicable to each and every believer in this Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Whichever organization, wherever you serve, you need to be the faithful one. It is not only just to do, it is not only just to tell, but in practical reality we need to prove it. And do you know what is the failure? In practical reality you will take time to grow up in the knowledge of of Bible doctrine. Therefore, as you walk out in experiential sanctification, you take time to yield like Christ, to yield the fruit unto like Jehovah, which is quite acceptable and pleasable in his arms. We have been called to become vessels of honor, sanctified for good works, and that good works have to leave behind a legendary impact. It is not that we need to have a black mark telling to the point that we are failures. If you can conclude with the points of this great England into the realm of 17th, 18th or 19th century, the engineering what they could get along with that motor vehicle known as Royal Enfield, it still reigns today in my country, India. Why? They were the best hands worked almost all 50, 60, 70 years back. They have done it as they were doing unto the Lord. They were not unfaithful men. The technology, the realm of their design, the realm of their purpose is absolutely great. Even the same thing with the Willis Jeep in USA. They have the things that they have done, the works to the Lord, they have done it. We need to have the principle of integrity as the way that we are serving in wherever, whichever work you have been called. You need to be, if you have been called to mob or to sweep the floor, you need to be the best one. If you are called to be the best administrator, you need to be the best one as if you are serving unto the Lord. And how is it possible for us? That's not possible unto none unless first we take in the word of the Lord faithfully. If you are not faithful enough to God in this world to take Bible doctrine as number one priority, you will not be faithful in any of the things. Take it granted. 
That's why our Lord reprimands in 16.11 of Luke. When you are not faithful, when you are not making yourself believable to the points of this unrighteous mammon in this world, who, anyone, who will give to you the true riches or the true work into your hands so that you can in return be proven faithful that's what the version goes. The condition if then in the unjust mammon, that is unrighteous one, if you are not believing, that you are not making yourself to be believed, then the true anyone, who shall be entrusting to you the true righteousness or the true trust in the riches of Christ? And how can you tell that you can be a faithful worker in Christ? How can you tell that you can really enjoy the grace of God? It will be a very tough time, dear brethren. Ponder over these things. You have not been called just to live behind in this pilgrimage trip as the way you want. What you do and teach both have to go in together. We have been called to show forth number one priority for doctrine so that we can have true faithfulness towards him and that could be entrusted in our hands and that entrustment what Lord has given will be applicable in each and every manner of walk in our life that we go through. It's a very great work, it's a very great time, it's a very great process. We cannot get along with XYZ trends. We need to get along with the patterns of Bible doctrine as more and as never before as we have gone through, as we have looked through. But what is happening in our churches? We are not able to consider it at all. We are not able to look at all. We are thinking upon our lust patterns to be fulfilled more eagerly than anything else. You come to the church, if you have the bona fide gift or not, you just stand in the pulpit and you do X, Y, Z things there, which is faithful enough. No, it is not. You have been called to show forth the knowledge of Bible doctrine as number one and to take number one priority and preach the word of the Lord as it is. And that's what you need to be first faithful to take in the word of the Lord consistently. That's why Apostle Paul was concluding in First Timothy, they should have a honest report. They should have a report that their family has been well maintained. That meant to say what? First, you need to have your house that is faithful to Bible doctrine. When you're faithful to Bible doctrine, your report will be honest. Your report will be true. Then you can be eligible to serve as deacons, not as a past teacher. Your eligibility is not for X, Y, Z things, but your, your eligibility is to serve the administration, that is to serve the tables, not to really go upon and preach the word of the Lord. For that you really require the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, and which demands whether you believe it or not, dear brethren, temporary sacrifice in your life, daily intake, daily faithfulness, daily intake of Bible doctrine, daily, daily, daily. Faithfulness is what God counts. Faithfulness is what God looks. Faithfulness is what God's standards are. Not honesty. Not fakery of the reports. Not to make and tell just for the pieces of bread or for some handful of barley, X, Y, Z trends. But we need to be faithful, faithful, faithful enough. And you believe it or not, dear brethren, I don't care. You need to be faithful enough to look and to stand before Jehovah to preach his word. When Apostle Paul was mentioning, he was mentioning the traits of the deaconship or an assistant pastor, if not the one who could partake in the tables, not into the ministry. The ministry is a spiritual modified gift given by Lord God the Father to us to really communicate the truth. And if this faithful gift is not being done properly, it's no way possible for them to understand. And that is what it is happening today in our pulpits. Therefore, the strong recommendation in Luke 16, 11, which tells to us that it is absolutely telling to the point when you are not faithful in this unrighteous mammon, you couldn't make yourself to be believable in the condition, then how can you be made believable to the true riches which could be trusted in your hands? And that's what many of the people have been failing today in our churches. So, dear brethren, we need to look, if you are a pastor teacher, to consider the things pertaining to Bible doctrine as more important than anything else. If it is not, it will be a great failure for you to understand the reality of the truth.
So which way you want to go, you decide. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple, believing Christ you shall be saved. And whereas for the believer, the great mandate is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, which is a day-by-day -day process of taking in Bible, the number one priority. And for the pastor teacher, the great process is to carry Satan, Lagan, herald the word in season and out of season, because of the diamond from my witnesses where they have been called. And this great diamond from our witnesses is number one indwelling trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and the witnesses being our hearers. And if there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what we need to do, we need to not worry about the softies, the fellow monasticism, the ecclesiastical displeasure, or we need not to worry about the things pertaining what will happen if we tell the truth, the income could be cut off. We need to tell as it comes in the word of the Lord as number one, and we need to take number one priority for Bible doctrine. So, dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. We shall come back tomorrow and continue the discourse. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.